What's up, Navigation Traders? Happy Friday, January 18th. Welcome to this week's video update. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. Before we jump into the alerts, just wanted to point out and recognize our weekly winner in our community for who got caught being hot, helping other traders. And this week's winner, Steve Danger. Nice work, buddy. You got caught being hot. A lot of good questions, shared a lot of good trade ideas, experiences, and overall just helped other traders, which is what this is all about. So congrats, Steve. And let's move on to the alerts. Uh, and actually, one other thing before we jump into the alerts, don't forget Monday in recognition of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Uh, markets will be closed, so no alerts on Monday of next week. So we will catch you all back here Tuesday for uh, for the first alert. So just an FYI there. So if, let's jump into the alerts for the week. Starting with the Monday the 14th, we uh, first trade was a closing trade in Lulu. So we had a short call vertical in Lulu. Uh, prices just continued to move higher after we put this on, never really had a chance. Actually, we had a chance early to get out for some profit, but we were holding for that short delta. Got down to a point where we only had four days left to expiration. Uh, we could have either rolled or closed. We opted to close and just take a loss on that trade as opposed to extending duration. We didn't really necessarily need any more short delta at the time, so it just made sense to close and take a loss on that one. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in EWW. So we just added a short strangle in EWW in the March cycle. So at that point, we had 60 days to expiration. So we wanted to start adding some positions in March. And so we did that in EWW. So if we take a look at this, here's the alert that we just added in March. You can see we got some profit already, but just waiting for some more theta to decay, some more time to pass before we do anything there. And then we've also got this adjusted strangle where you can see prices hanging out all the way over here on the break even point. If we look at just our puts, you can see we're getting close to a point where there's, you know, not too much value left. There's still there's still okay amount and there's still about $85 worth of value in those puts. Uh, but if it moves much higher, we will simply roll up our puts. So we'll roll up the untested side to about that 30 delta range and continue to manage as needed. If we do that, if we do do that roll, so right now we would do that next week. Right now we've got 28 days to expiration. And so instead of just rolling those up in February, we would just roll those up and roll the entire spread out to March. So look for that if EWW continues higher into next week. Next trade was a closing trade in XLU. We had an iron condor, booked almost 25% of max profit in just 15 days in that trade. So we are out of XLU, good trade there. Next trade was an opening trade in IYR. So this is the real estate ETF. We had closed out of our position in IYR last week. And so we were just looking to get back in with implied volatility, uh, at that point it was it was a little bit higher than it is now, uh, but uh, you know it's still above that 50 level. It was in the 60s when we put this on, so we jumped back into IYR, did an iron condor. You can see prices uh, still right here, so uh, still well within range. Just waiting for some more time to pass in that one. Next trade is a a, a rolling adjusting trade that we did in oil. So we had two sets of short strangles in oil, and we rolled this one from March that had 30 days to expiration out to April with 59 days. Reason we did that is, is we'd gotten to a point where we were over 50% of max profit on this piece, and so just wanted to roll out. And we did a couple of things. One is we, um, we, we moved our puts down from 63 and a half to 58. And so that got us a little bit less inverted. We're still inverted, but it just kind of re reduced that inversion and it cut down our, our long delta. So it cut down our directional exposure in oil. So we weren't as long. 
And, and so that's where we're at with this one. So we've still got the two pieces in oil. Let's look at this one first because this is the one we rolled. So oil is moved up nicely since that roll. We've, we've already gotten, we're already up over $900 on this piece since doing that roll. You can see we've got the 53 call and the 58 put. Our puts are higher than our call, so that's what we consider being inverted, uh, but still very centered within our uh, range here. So just continuing to let time pass, let that theta decay, and get back to profits. We're still down. Uh, we're, de we're we're still down a decent amount of money on our oil trade overall, but definitely coming back nicely. Uh, the other oil piece that we have on is still in the March cycle with 27 days to expiration. And you can see it's pretty centered here. And we're over 50% of max profit on this piece of the trade as well. I just wanted to spread these out a little bit uh, so we didn't we weren't doing all the rolls in, in one day. And so we'll probably look into next week to roll this out to April as well. And in this case, we may uh, adjust these strikes you know, down to a straddle or keep them the same. It depends on where price is at that point. But we will uh, we'll be looking to roll this one next week as well. We're getting close to that 21 days to expiration. And so next week will be a good point to go ahead and roll this out, kind of lock in that credit and readjust our strikes potentially and continue to extend duration on our oil position. Uh, if we look at USO, just to get an idea of the implied volatility reading, you'll see that implied volatility has just been really contracting nicely over the last couple of weeks, giving us that good theta decay, as well as prices have uh, you know stabilized as well, which is what exactly what we needed. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in XRT. So we rolled our short strangle in XRT from February out to March. Uh, kind of the same situation. We were over 50% of max profit on that piece of the trade. So we just wanted to extend duration and, uh, and collect a credit on that roll. So if we took a look at XRT, here's where we are. It's moved up since then. And so we're still within range here, but just kind of hanging out in the upper end of the range. It, you can see we've still got a decent amount of premium left in those puts. So definitely not looking to make an adjustment on that one anytime soon. Uh, we've got a lot of time and, uh, and still... Um, still some premium in that untested side. So just going to let things play out here. The one thing that we would consider doing potentially if implied volatility you know, stayed high is we may add another piece to this, a new centered strangle around the current price if it were to continue much higher you know, out here in the out, out of the break evens and so forth. So we'll see what happens. If, of course, if it bounced back, Bounces back, we'll continue to wait and collect that theta and manage as necessary. Next trade was a closing trade in FXI. So this is our butterfly trade that we had on for quite some time. And we were just kind of letting price play ping pong. We'd, we'd, we'd buy a put butterfly, we'd buy a call butterfly as it moved in and out of the range. Uh, eventually just uh, closed it out and booked a nice profit in FXI. Actually a small, small winner, uh, but uh, a winner nonetheless. And so we are completely out of FXI. If we take a look at the charts and just get an idea of where implied volatility is, one of the reasons that we got out was because implied volatility has gotten really, really low. IV percentile of 11, IV rank of 14. So unless implied volatility spikes back up over that 50 level, we are completely out of FXI. Next trade was an opening trade in Microsoft. So we haven't been doing many earnings related trades recently just because implied volatility has been so high across the board. And when that is the case, we like to allocate most of our capital to those premium selling, those core income generating strategies that we teach. Uh, but in this case, we wanted to mix in a pre-earnings long straddle in Microsoft. And so if we take a look at Microsoft, and, and by the way, they, um, they I didn't mention when they announced in the alert. So let's take a look at Microsoft and click on the little blue button. So 130. January 30th after the market closes is when they um, is when they announce. 
So what we're looking at on a pre-earnings straddle is you, you can see how implied volatility has contracted here. And so when we buy a long straddle, when we do a pre-earnings long straddle, we are looking for a pretty large price move and or a nice expansion in implied volatility. So we think that implied volatility is going to expand into earnings like it typically does. And so as we see it contracting, we looked at that as a good opportunity to enter the trade. Now, since then, it's, it's contracted even more. But what we have gotten is a pretty decent price move. So if we take a look at our analyze tab here, you can see here's where price is. So we're already up about 150 some dollars on the trade. Uh, one, implied volatility, the, the price of the options did expand right after we put them on, but now we're getting a decent move higher, and so we're up some money. I'd like to see, I'd like to capture about $250, $300 on this trade, so if we can get it continuing to move higher, we get an expansion implied volatility, uh, then we should hopefully be able to book a profit on, on this trade, so we'll see what happens there. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in IWM. We did that one this morning. And so we just closed out the put vertical side of our iron condor. Price had breached our upside break even, and there was very little value left in that put vertical side. So we went ahead and closed that out. So you can see price is still just barely out of range here. So, we could, so now we're looking for a little bit of downside to benefit that. I also mentioned in the alert, I haven't added another centered iron condor around the current price yet. Uh, just implied volatility has just been steadily contracting. So I'm, I'm hoping that potentially next week, maybe we get a little bit of a price move down and we get a little bit of a pop in implied volatility. And that's when I'll be looking to to enter. Uh, we could have done it now. I mean, implied vol the IV percentiles above 50. So there's no issue with that either. I just, you know, with, with everything kind of contracting today, the premium being sucked out of the options, I, I'd rather wait to see if we can get a little bit of a pop get a little bit higher credit when we sell that iron condor. And so we'll see if we can potentially do that sometime next week. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in DIA. So we had two sets of short call verticals in DIA. And this one we went ahead and rolled. It was, it was uh, extremely far out of range with very little chance of getting back. So we were in a kind of a negative theta position. So I wanted to readjust that get it back to a positive theta position and, and roll out to extend duration. So in February, we had 28 days to expiration. Out in March, we rolled out to where we have 56. And then we adjusted our strikes up because prices moved up on us. And so let's take a look at that DIA position at this point. So, and, and I mean, look how, I mean, this market has just been ridiculously strong ever since the day after Christmas. I mean, it's just, I mean, the Dow's up over 3,000 points. The S&P's up over 350 points since December 26. So it's been a, just a massive rally that we're seeing. And so uh, that is what has caused it to bust out of our range on these short call verticals. And so we rolled it. You can see its price has moved up even more since we did that roll. Uh, but we just adjusted the strikes to that 250, 255 level, gave ourselves over a 60% probability of profit on that piece, and we'll just continue to manage. And we got ourselves back into a positive theta position here as opposed to that time decay working against us. Now, we've got this other piece in DIA as well, with, which is another short call vertical, which has also moved out of a range. Uh, We've still, I always look at just the gray box as, as a quick reference. This is the one standard deviation move. So we still have a decent chance that this could sure, certainly get back into range. So I'm no, not looking to roll this one yet, uh, even though it is in a slight negative theta decay position. We'll just kind of hold on to this for that short delta. And if it moves back into range, great. If it, if it doesn't, then we'll look to adjust and roll this one at a later date. So that's DIA. And lastly, our uh, last one was a closing trade in Johnson & Johnson. So this is a short call vertical that we put on for some short delta exposure. And they announced earnings on January 22nd, which is Tuesday before the market opens. So the last time you have to close this is the day before. But remember, 
the market is closed for Martin Luther King Day on the 21st. So today is really the last day you have to close this trade before earnings. We didn't really want to hold it uh, through earnings, so we went ahead and closed it and booked a booked a small winner. So we are out of J and J now at this point. All right, those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of the other positions that we've got going on, starting with. 6B, this is the British pound. And you can see we've got some profit here up about $220-ish. Uh, not quite enough to take off yet. We've got a max profit of $700, so we want 40 to 50% of that. So continuing to hold that for now. Uh, I mentioned oil, we're in good shape there. ES, we've got this long put vertical. You can see prices moved out of our range with that strong up move in, in the S&P. So just looking for some more downside to benefit that. That is in the February cycle, currently with 28 days to expiration. So we've got a decent amount of time there. Uh, Natty Gas, we've got these two pieces here. Uh, this is the first one. This is the 3.2 call for put. And you can see prices right here. So we're making back some good profit in Natty Gas. And then the other piece is this one here. Very similar thing, making it, making back some good profit in that gas. Still down some, uh, but working our way back nicely. The interesting thing uh, earlier this week was we got a, uh, and I'll go to UNG so we can look at the implied volatility, but uh, we got this huge move up, which is what we needed. We needed a move up to get back in, in our favor but what also happened is implied volatility spiked. So even though we got a really nice move in our favor from a directional standpoint, implied volatility spiked so much that we were actually down a little bit on the day uh, when, when that happened. So kind of interesting, just shows how much implied volatility plays into the pricing of these options. And uh, and that's why, we, that's why we utilize it the way we do. So... Uh, Nicely in range, though, with both of our trades here. So we're just playing the wait and see game. Both of these trades are in uh, in March, so 38 days to expiration. So not looking to roll out in time yet. Uh, but as we get closer and closer to that 21 days to expiration, we will be looking to do so. Uh, ZB bonds. We've got an adjusted strangle here in bonds. Let me spread this out so you can see it a little bit better. See, prices has been going down with stocks going up. Bonds have been having kind of an inverse correlation. So bonds have been going down. So it's hanging out here kind of in the lower end of our range. So we could use a little bit of a pop higher in price and for some more theta to decay. So just playing the waiting game in bonds right now. Wheat, we've got our iron condor in wheat. And we're almost at a point where we can book profits on that one. Just going to let that hold into next week. And if, if we get some stable, you know, prices stay stable, we'll potentially book that one. Apple, our long put, uh, long put vertical that we've been holding for short delta here uh, with the rest of the market, prices moved up here. So just looking for some downside to get back into range on our Apple trade. Costco, this is one we put on for short delta uh, as well. You can see prices hanging out right here near the break even, just looking for some downside in Costco to benefit that trade. Uh, I was looking for, you know, we had that huge move down after earnings and it kind of popped back up. I was hoping for a little bit of a continuation to the downside, but with the rest of the market being strong, Costco has popped its head up as well. So just continuing to hold that for that short delta exposure. We don't have any earnings coming up anytime soon, so we don't have that to worry about at this point. DIA, I mentioned that one. EEM, we've got an iron condor here in EEM, and you can see it's kind of hanging out in the upper end of the range, so just looking for a little bit of downside in EEM to benefit that trade. And then EWW, I mentioned that one. We've got these two pieces on here. One is hanging out in the upper end of the range, and then the other one is the new piece that we just put on where we've got that pretty centered strangle there. EWZ, we've got this adjusted strangle here uh, where it's hanging out in kind of the upper end of the range. Uh, we did not add another strangle with implied volatility as low as it is, so we'll continue to adjust and roll and manage this one, but we will not be adding to it unless implied volatility were to spike higher. So just kind of managing this one as is at this point. 
mention IWM, IWR, IYR, I mentioned Microsoft, Qs. Okay, so the Qs are in a very similar situation from DIA. You can see prices uh, just you know crush through that that uh, break even point way out of our range. You can see the one standard deviation gray box. It's going to have a very little chance to get back. Uh, but with the roll in DIA and the adjustments we did today, I didn't want to do this one the same day. So hopefully we'll get a little bit of a pop higher into next week and we'll do the same thing. We will roll this out from February to March, extend that duration, keep that short delta exposure in our portfolio. And then our other short call vertical, kind of a similar situation. It's out of our range, but not so far that it can't get back. And, uh, and so we'll continue to hold this one for now. And, and by the way, as far as our short delta exposure, we're about two to one on our ratio. So uh, we like to use a ratio of theta versus short delta. So we like to, our short delta be, to be anywhere from one to one up to as high as five to one uh, versus our theta. And so we're about two to one right now, which, which I like. I like that position. I, you know, I, I like having the short delta exposure on with the massive run up that we've seen in stocks. You know, at some point we'll see a little bit of a pullback here, so that will help that uh, short delta exposure. And uh, not looking to add any more at this point. And and that's the the good we we played this really well, even though this short delta is really hurting with this with this huge you know massive rally that we're seeing in stocks. We didn't get too aggressive in adding short delta. You know, I know a lot of people when we were down here. Uh, we had a lot of members, emails in the community talking about, I need to add short delta, I need to add short delta. But keep in mind, when you get a rally, it's going, and you have range bound positions on like strangles and iron condors, you're automatically going to acquire some short delta. And so we got some, some natural short delta exposure because the market moved up on us. And then we did add a little bit, but we didn't get super aggressive about adding short delta down here. And this is why, okay? Uh, you just gotta, and that's why we use a range. You 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 can't over manage that. You can't over adjust your positions and over manage your deltas. You've just you've got to play that range and just let it bounce around because sometimes it'll naturally adjust itself. For example, if we get a couple, you know, if, if we get several down days next week. You know, if we get down back down to, you know, this range here, that's going to suck a lot of our short delta away, meaning, you know, it's going to it's going to the market moves down. We have that short delta exposure that's automatically going to get taken away. So we don't want to be too over. We don't want to over adjust our, our delta positions. We just want to let those play out in a range. SMH. We've got an adjusted strangle on in SMH. You can see it's hanging out in the upper end of the range here. Implied volatility still over that 50 level, so we could potentially look to add to this next week, assuming implied volatility stays high. That would be an area that we would potentially look to do because this one is in February, so we could add one out in March, a centered strangle around that current price. Uh, to add some credits there. And so we may look to do that if implied volatility stays high next week. If we look at our puts, uh, still got a decent amount, still got a little bit of, of, of premium left in our puts. So if it moves much higher, we will roll our puts up, but we are just holding for now. SPY, we've got two pieces here. We've got one short call vertical, which is from an iron condor. Price blew through our break even here. So we closed out the untested side. Still holding our short call vertical at this point, and we'll look to do something with that uh, as we see price move around. Of course, if it comes back, still has a chance to come back in range, getting closer to the point where it doesn't. So we may close that out or roll it. We'll see where we're at with everything next week. And then we've got our other piece, which is a full iron condor, which is now kind of hanging out in the upper end or range, upper end of the range of that one. So same thing, if, if price continues a lot higher. We'll close out the untested side here and then manage those short call verticals as needed. XLK, we had this one on for short delta as well. It's it's moved quite a bit out of range, so we will look to you know work with this one into next week. This is in February, so we may look to roll that out to March uh, or close it out. Depends, depends on where we're at, but we'll, we'll make an adjustment or address that one next week. XLV, also have this on for that short delta exposure. 
I know uh, this one was uh, p- pretty profitable, kind of in that between 35 and 50 percent of max profit at one point, and we were continuing to hold it for that short delta exposure, just based on everything else we were doing. Uh, I know some of you took off that and booked a profit, so good for you. That was a obviously in hindsight, that was a great call. Uh, we're still holding though. Uh, we're still well with you know we're still in range here, uh, but just looking for some downside to benefit that XLV position. And then I already mentioned XRT, our uh, adjusted strangle out in March. So. Those are all of our positions and those are all of our alerts. I really like the exposure that we've got here. I mean, we've got, I mentioned this in our, my kind of written uh, recap of our portfolio yesterday. We've got a lot of good exposure in different positions. Uh, we were pretty light on the number of alerts this week, just beca- and actually the week before too, because we're just letting our positions work for us, and that's not a bad thing. We've got a lot of positions on. We've got a lot of good theta decay, and um, and I like our directional exposure at this point as well. So in good shape, and we look forward to another great week of trading next week. Everybody have a good weekend, and we will see you on Tuesday. Don't forget, Monday's a holiday. See you on Tuesday. Take care.